five mile run this morning. I've been back in Chester for about a week. Uh, if I'm honest, I've only just started vlogging. I'm going back to Newcastle, so I need to find something to speak about. <laughs> I think it just as we're going past the race course, I think tomorrow I might do something more intense. In the brightness. On your phone. Are you filming this? Okay, so one lap of the Chester race course is one mile, one furlong. Uh, 1.8 kilometers long. It's almost 2k. Speaking of 2k. Okay, can I get some ketchup, please? The 2K was interesting. I did it about two weeks ago now, just before the 2K. The 2K was on the Monday. The dissertation deadline handling was the Thursday beforehand. So that week before the 2K, diet went out the window. No training got done. I think I did about two works in the week. The weekend, so this is two days before my uh, 2K test, I had my birthday party. So alcohol was consumed that night. I was hungry on the Sunday, and then I had 2K test on the Monday. But yeah, I was literally curled around my bowl of pasta the night before the 2k, forcing myself to eat it. When the morning came around, I really wasn't very confident in my ability. So I was going to aim for about 635, because I thought that terrible week of training had just thrown everything out the window. I wasn't going to get myself in a crew again. But how did the test go? First, I'm going to get a shower. <laughs> so, I set off gunning for about 6.35 and I hadn't done a TK in something stupid like three years. So it's going to be pretty difficult to gauge as to how hard I was actually going and how much it was hurting. So the first K was interesting, it sort of felt like it sort of felt like it wasn't hurting that much. But my split was still going up and down, up and down. And again, I still didn't remember as to whether this was natural. But the first K was alright, it was quite comfortable. I kept telling myself that going into the going past the K mark was where I really had to dig in and just ignore what my brain was telling me as to these pain signals I'd be getting. The K mark came and I wasn't actually in that much pain. So I was starting to think, was this how it used to be? Did it used to hurt this much? I still thought I had a bit of stuff in the basement. But the next sort of landmark is about the 750 point, 750 metres to go. And again, I still thought that I was going to stick with the 635 split, but it's still, I still haven't pr approached my proper anaerobic pain threshold. And so with 500 meters to go, I dropped my... <clears throat> and this is what happened to my split. So it started off, first 500, average split, 137.7. Second 500, 139.5, took my foot off the gas. Third 500, 139.1, I stayed the same pace. Fourth 500, last final 500, 133.5. <clears throat> Split hit 124 in the last 300. I ended up taking my predicted 2K score from 635 down to 629. 629.8, that's what I got in the end. A strong score, I'm really happy with that. But it does beg the question, if I'd prepared properly for this and the week running up, what I could have actually achieved. I do think I approached it the right way, given the poor preparation I had in the run up to this, that I didn't go off too hard and, you know, seven, eight weeks of work and 6.29.8, I'm pretty happy with that. But the real shame is that I could have done better. I could have had a better run up for the 2K and I could have gone off at a better split. But these are learning curves. So yeah, that was my egg test. I think that's pretty much going to be it for today. And tomorrow morning I'm just going to go head down to the race course and do a few laps. Okay, so one lap is 1.8k. I think I'll go for five laps. It is currently 10 to 10 and I've got a train to catch at 12, so time's a bit against me. So I'll see how far I get. I would do that thing where I leave the camera out and I go running and then I come back and collect it and then I go running again. But uh, I don't think the battery life's going to make it on the cannon, so...
Welcome to the third race at the Honeymoon is Over Downs. They're at the gate, and they're off. Jumping out in the lead is Romance and Affection, with Domestic Bliss in close behind. It's Romance and Affection and Domestic Bliss. Here comes Marriage Vows, followed by Immediate Child. Romance and Affection falling off quickly. Mortgaged up the ass, overtaking Domestic Bliss. Dilly, calling it Molesworth, Delmere, Cuddington, Green Bank, Northwich. Yeah, you do. They're really serious, but it's yeah, like it's possible to be like natural, right? Yeah, it's like yeah. such an unnatural thing. <laughs> <laughs>